Hi, this is quiz time. Who was the first audiophile? And, uh, or can we even identify such a person? And, and that's the question. And um, please uh, enter into, your, into the comment section. Who do you think was the first audiophile in, uh, in the history of, uh, of audio? And uh, some of you might say that it was Harry Pearson, but, but really Harry Pearson, he, he was the one who, who coined the term high-end audio. And that's something uh, I would say relatively new. Uh, audiophiles existed already before Harry Pearson. High fidelity uh, was a thing uh, when, uh, when Harry Pearson was a young boy already. So clearly there had to be an audiophile who came before his age and uh, you might be shocked that my answer is or, or what I think the answer is to that is that there was such a person who I consider the first audiophile in history and, uh, and I can tell you guys that he is my role model in audio and uh, I would say that I can consider myself the follower of his lineage of loudspeaker design. Because guess what? He did not just uh, sit around on his uh, behind, but he had some serious contribution to audio. And, and for that, I need to take you back in time to basically the turn of the 1800s to 1900s. At the time where uh, reproduced music, audio equipment was just discovered. And, and where this mystery audiophile entered into the picture is that uh, basically he had to uh, discover things from ground up because he was an audiophile when there were no yet audiophile grade equipment and he was an audiophile to such an extreme degree that he basically was responsible for creating high fidelity creating uh, audiophile uh, products or he opened up uh, the audio uh, development to the road that we can have high fidelity equipment where uh, sound quality, natural sound quality is a consideration because when you look at it in the 1920s yes, we are now back in the 1920s not 2020 exactly 100 years ago I'm taking you back in time at that time audio basically consisted of radios, right? that was the only source that we had so if you want to look at it, Collector's Guide to Antique Radios, written by Marty and Stu Bunnies. And, and when we look, just flip it open. Uh, let, let's give you an example here. You can see this is how the antique radios looked like. Oh, where? There. Like, like a box like that. And basically, these uh, housed uh, vacuum tubes which were the radio receiver and the uh, output section and, and there was and you connected it to some sort of rudimentary loudspeaker and the purpose of that was just to give you sound and, and the purpose of this equipment really in the beginning was for you to able to hear something from far away right and then this gave way to, to radios like this where basically it was the same thing as this, this guy here so, so you had the vacuum tube components inside a box and into the box they also put a loudspeaker behind that nice uh, grill. And, and basically the radios, the houses of the radios acted just as a house to accommodate the uh, tube complement and, 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 the, and the loudspeaker. But the, the concept behind that was not to turn this into a loudspeaker cabinet. These were not loudspeaker cabinets yet. That concept did not exist back at that time. Or oh, look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? So they were more like uh, regarded as art objects. 
and then the, uh, let's see look look at that beauty there and they they were more like uh, to or, or here isn't that amazing so so they they look more like a furniture grade stuff that uh, just uh, devolved into cheap uh, transistor crap over time but uh, the advent of loudspeakers of loudspeaker cabinets where the purpose of the box is not to make it uh, pleasant enough so that you bring a foreign object into your living room and it does not ruin the decor but the function of the cabinet is to improve the sound and that was basically the idea of this first mystery man audiophile and he did much more than that so imagine that so he was uh, he was not the only person of course toying with loudspeaker cabinet there were others i cannot tell with certainty that he was the first to ever try that but i know that uh, in his time he had no peers around him who were into that business and he he went into that direction on his own and and developed and designed his loudspeaker cabinets based on his own uh, experiences what he heard how uh, a loudspeaker a cone uh, reproduced the, the sound and and he tried to do something improvement about it to to make it more natural uh, and uh, and he did even more than that so this mystery man he not just invented basically loudspeaker cabinets he also insp invented the loudspeaker itself the electrodynamic drivers electrodynamic driver is let me show an example okay here we go it's in a box i know like you you can go any store pick up a, a, a loudspeaker driver right that's how they look like so basically this mystery audiophile first audiophile he invented this technology and and now uh, if you know who I am talking about you you will be mortified and say of course he did not invent it that was Rice and Kellogg they patent uh, they they had the first uh, patent on uh, on the electrodynamic uh, loudspeaker but the thing is that this mystery audiophile independently from Rice and Kellogg invented the same technology but, and, and by the time uh, he came uh, close to uh, patent, uh, do the patent on it Rice and Kellogg already patented his so, so he, he just abandoned the, pat, uh, the patent attempt and, and, and that was it so that's why history remembers Rice and Kellogg as the inventor of electrodynamic loudspeaker but that does not take any of this mystery audiophile's uh, uh, brilliance and innovativeness away because he invented it in parallel with Rice and Kellogg uh, and, uh, and, and I have to add that while Rice and Kellogg they focused on uh, making their invention uh, more commercial making a shit ton of money out of it and making basically these radios popular as hell huh? that was allow that was solely because of Rice and Kellogg's invention but they did not pursue it further they were happy about it they were happy about mass manufacturing it and uh, doing minor changes and this mystery audiophile he actually went so much further that he invented high efficiency drivers so basically a few years after the invention of the electrodynamic driver he already invented uh, he upgraded it to such a degree uh, that, that he was basically the father of uh, high efficiency drivers and if you know about high efficiency drivers basically they are the source of uh, I would say the highest quality transducers uh, available today 
And um, and did he stop with that? Of course not. Check this out. He invented horn technology. Now we are going bonkers, right? Have you ever heard about the Tectrix horn? Yup, that was his patent. And uh, and and he he had like tons of inventions, tons of patents to his name, and basically. Uh, he also was the first to work with room acoustics to recognize that the room does something to the equipment sound. And when you put a, 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 a loudspeaker into a room, then the room interacts with the loudspeaker and changes its sound dramatically. And, and he developed the loudspeaker cabinets to compensate for the room effect. So basically, he is not just the first audiophile in the world, but he is the father of basically of all modern loudspeakers. And um, so, so I think that uh, eventually when you look at each of these areas, you will find a lot of inventors, a lot of brilliant people who worked on each of these fields and added a tremendous uh, amount of effort into it. But uh, to my knowledge, he was the first who ever uh, took this undertaking to, uh, to, to build loudspeaker for, for high sound quality. Uh, he was the first to give guidance uh, towards this direction and also he was the first one who had vision, purpose, and the foundation for high fidelity. Because every other inventor, they had pieces. They were people who, like Rice and Kellogg, who, who invented and, and successfully patented as first the electrodynamic driver. Uh, then, actually, much later on, there were other people working on high-efficiency drivers. There were tons of people working on horn technology. There were also others working on loudspeaker cabinets. There, there were also who are credited to their name on, on breakthroughs on room acoustics. But it was him alone who had the vision to look at all of these fields. And he also added the possibilities of amplification, of uh, matching everything for a low power output tube amplifier. So he was the one who had a clear picture in his mind, who looked at a whole, at an optimized system. And, uh, and he, he, his vision was the entire uh, technology and not just a snapshot, not just an isolated broken fragment. Because if you are into horns only, sure, you can do exceptional horns. But if you don't know uh, about loudspeaker cabinet design, uh, you don't know about the uh, exact behavior of uh, drivers, you are not an expert of room acoustics, uh, then you will have uh, less than satisfactory results. Because you can perfect one area greatly, but if it doesn't fit the picture, then we have problems. And he was the guy who had it all down and and to this name to this day there is a loudspeaker type that bears his name and people and it is i would say one of the most popular diy loudspeaker builds and even though i said most popular uh, if you hear its name you probably draw a blank on it uh, but uh, it, it's something truly astonishing and uh, People think it's from the 50s or, or 60s, something like that, but no, it is from the 30s. And it's quite likely one of the very first loudspeaker cabinets and the, certainly uh, one of the first high efficiency uh, cabinet that uses horn loading ever uh, designed. And, and uh, up to this day, even though it's an almost, it's an, uh, it's a 90 year old design, but it's still capable of uh, bringing you to audio nirvana. And I have, I am on a roll right now about the Holy Grail of loudspeaker, talking about my Altec uh, 
voice of Lancelot, how I got there, why I think it's, it's so uh, the last thing uh, in my head. But uh, it, it's something that's not so obviously accessible for everyone. I already made it clear that the drivers you need for that are either uh, unavailable or uh, available if you live in California for a, 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 sh a small price. If you have access to internet ordering somewhere in the world, then it will be orbitally expensive. Or if you can pick it up locally, maybe you can pick it up for a, a six pack, like a, a crate of beer. So, but it's something that's not clearly accessible to everyone. However, that kind of loudspeaker that he invented almost a century ago, that's available for everyone and that's available for a beginner loudspeaker. It was my first ever loudspeaker build and, uh, and if you are totally new into audio, you can build it. Uh, my Altec speaker, even though I will share how to do it, if you try it, I would suggest if you haven't had uh, at least a decade or two decades of really serious, deep uh, experience building and designing loudspeakers, don't even think about it because you will not be able to uh, reproduce it properly. Uh, so, so that's why I'm giving you, introducing you to him and, and what he created because it's the Goldilocks loudspeaker that really unlocks the potential of low power amplifiers and what it is we are going to continue from here. Bye bye.